Welcome to the Psychology and Physical Training Channel. Ever find yourself trapped in a spiral of negative thoughts? Here are the eight Japanese techniques to help stop overthinking. Overthinking is a common issue that many of us face. It's like a quicksand trap for the mind. The more you struggle, the deeper you sink. But what if there were techniques, strategies even, that could help you break free from this mental bind? Well, you're in luck. From the land of the rising sun comes a philosophy that offers just that. Today, we dive into the wisdom from the East and explore eight Japanese techniques that help combat overthinking. Let's start with a popular Japanese concept called Ikigai. This profound idea translates to purpose in life, and it holds an essential key to reducing overthinking. You see, Ikigai encourages us to identify what brings us joy, fulfillment, and a sense of purpose. It could be anything, painting, writing, teaching, or even gardening. The important aspect is that it should be something that ignites passion within you, something that makes your heart sing. Now, why is it crucial in our quest to stop overthinking? Well, when we focus our energy on these meaningful activities, we naturally divert our attention from unnecessary worrisome thoughts. We become more present, more engaged in the moment. This simple shift in focus can make a world of difference in our mental well-being. So find your ikigai, your purpose, and let it guide you away from the maze of overthinking. Next up is Kaizen, a principle of continuous improvement. Derived from the Japanese words kai, meaning change, and zen, meaning good, kaizen is all about embracing incremental transformations. Instead of seeking monumental shifts overnight, kaizen encourages us to make small, manageable adjustments to our habits, routines, and thought patterns. These minor tweaks can accumulate over time, leading to substantial personal growth and development. Imagine you're on a journey, not a sprint, but a marathon. Every mile you cover, every step you take is a testament to your progress. That's Kaizen. It's the art of making small changes today for a better tomorrow. Whether it's waking up 10 minutes earlier, reading a page of a book daily, or taking a moment each day to express gratitude, every minor adjustment contributes to the larger picture of self-improvement. So let's embrace Kaizen and remember, change begins with you and every small step counts. Now, let's talk about Harahachi Boo and Wabi Sabi. Harahachibu, a concept emerging from the Japanese island of Okinawa, is a powerful tool for those struggling with overeating or excessive thinking about food. It translates to 8 parts out of 10 full, guiding us to stop eating when we are 80% full. This isn't just about physical health, it's an exercise in mindfulness. It encourages us to tune into our body signals, to appreciate each bite, and to avoid the mindless consumption that can so often lead to overthinking. It's about recognizing when you've had just enough and understanding that just enough is plenty. It's about knowing that satisfaction doesn't mean being overstuffed, but rather being content. And then there's wabi-sabi. It's a phrase that rolls off the tongue, yet its meaning is profound. Wabi-sabi is the celebration of the beauty of imperfection. In a world that often seeks flawless perfection, wabi-sabi is a breath of fresh air. It's a reminder that perfection is not only unattainable, but also unnecessary. It proposes that our quirks, our flaws, and our imperfections are not our shortcomings, but rather, they are what make us unique and beautiful. Wabi-sabi nudges us away from our unending quest for perfection, thus freeing us from the shackles of overthinking. It's about understanding that it's okay not to have all the answers, that it's okay to make mistakes, and that it's okay to be a work in progress. It's about finding beauty in the natural cycle of growth and decay, and understanding that change is an essential part of life. So, what can we learn from Harahachibu and Wabi Sabi? They teach us to be present, to appreciate the now, and to let go of the unattainable standards we often set for ourselves. By practicing Harahachibu, we can become more mindful eaters and thinkers. Through wabi-sabi, we can learn to appreciate our imperfections and stop overthinking our flaws. So embrace the beauty of imperfection and listen to your body's signals to lead a more mindful life. Moving on to Shoshin and Gaman. Let's delve into the concept of Shoshin first. In Japanese, Shoshin translates to beginner's mind. It's a philosophy that encourages one to approach every situation, every task, every problem with the openness, eagerness, and lack of preconceptions that a beginner would have. It's about seeing the world anew, 
free from the chains of past experiences and biases. Now you might be wondering, why would I want to be a beginner again? Well, the answer is simple. A beginner's mind is a learning mind. It is not clouded by past failures or successes, not constrained by what should be or has been. It's a mind that is open to new possibilities, new solutions, new ways of thinking and doing. And in this openness, there is freedom from overthinking. The freedom to explore, to make mistakes, to learn and to grow. Next, we have Gaman. Gaman is a term that embodies the ideas of endurance, patience and tolerance. It's about facing adversity with grace and dignity, without complaint or despair. It's about accepting life's challenges and hardships, not as obstacles to happiness, but as opportunities for growth and self-improvement. Practicing Gaiman means to endure the seemingly unbearable with patience and dignity. It's about standing strong in the face of adversity, about pushing through the tough times with a sense of calm and composure. When we practice Gaiman, we are not ignoring or suppressing our pain or difficulties. Instead, we are acknowledging them, accepting them, and patiently working through them. In the practice of Gaman, we find resilience. We learn to weather life's storms with grace and dignity, to endure the unendurable, and to find strength in our struggles. And in this resilience, we find freedom from overthinking. The freedom to face life's challenges head-on, to find solutions instead of dwelling on problems, and to move forward with courage and determination. Remember, a beginner's mind opens new doors and patience can turn mountains into molehills. Lastly, let's explore Shinrin-yoku and Ganbaru. Shinrin-yoku, or forest bathing, is a simple and age-old Japanese concept that encourages us to spend more time with nature. This isn't about hiking or jogging through the woods, but rather simply being with nature, soaking in the environment, and allowing it to envelop us with its tranquility. By immersing ourselves in the natural world, we can experience a profound sense of peace and clarity. This practice not only soothes the mind, but also has numerous physical benefits, like reducing blood pressure and enhancing our immune system. The beauty of Shinrin-yoku lies in its simplicity. It doesn't ask for much but to step outside, be it in a nearby park or a forest and let nature do the rest. It's about disconnecting from the digital world and reconnecting with our roots, our essence. By indulging in this forest bathing, we allow our overworked minds to rest, rejuvenate, and reset. Now let's turn to Gambaru. This concept encourages us to be patient and calm when it comes to expecting the results of our efforts. It's easy to get caught up in the anticipation of outcomes, but Gambaru reminds us to stay grounded and focused on our goals. It's about putting in our best effort, regardless of the end result. Gambaru is the embodiment of resilience and tenacity. It teaches us to persevere, even when the going gets tough. This doesn't mean we should work ourselves to the bone. Instead, Gambaru promotes a balanced approach to striving, where we give our all without compromising our well-being. It's about understanding that results take time and that's okay. Patience, in this case, is indeed a virtue. So immerse yourself in nature, stay patient, and keep your focus on your goals, not the outcomes. These practices of Shinrin-yoku and Ganbaru can be powerful tools to help quiet the mind and foster a sense of peace and resilience. Remember, it's not about rushing to the finish line but enjoying the journey along the way. Now that we've explored these techniques, let's take a moment to summarize. We began with Ikigai, a concept that urges us to find joy, fulfillment, and purpose in life. It's about zeroing in on what truly matters and pouring our energy into those activities. It's a powerful antidote to overthinking as it aligns our focus with our passions. We then delved into Kaizen, the principle of continuous improvement. It encourages us to make small incremental changes to our habits, routines, and thought patterns, gradually steering us away from the path of overthinking. Hara Hachibu followed next, reminding us to practice mindful eating and stop when we are 80% full. It teaches us to listen to our body's signals of satisfaction, preventing overindulgence. Wabi Sabi taught us the beauty of imperfection, helping us to release the obsession with perfectionism. It's about finding beauty in the flawed, and in doing so, we can stop overthinking our own perceived imperfections. Shoshin invited us to approach things with a beginner's mind, setting aside any preconceived knowledge. It's a mindset that makes us open to new lessons and decisions, fostering a willingness to learn. Gaman taught us the art of patience, especially in challenging situations. 
It encourages acceptance and calmness, directing our focus towards solutions instead of overthinking the worst outcomes. Shinrin Yoku or forest bathing encouraged us to spend more time with nature, fostering a sense of peace and tranquility that keeps overthinking at bay. Lastly, Gambaru reminded us to be patient and calm when it comes to expecting results. It urges us to stay true to our goals and not worry about the outcomes too soon. Remember, the key to overcoming overthinking lies in these simple yet profound Japanese techniques. So, that was a journey into the Japanese art of overcoming overthinking. These eight techniques, each a gem in its own right, offer a unique perspective on how to navigate life. From finding your ikigai, embracing imperfection with wabi-sabi, to forest bathing with Shinrin Yoku, and staying patient with Ganbaru. There's a lot to learn and implement. These are not just techniques, but a way of life. Put these techniques into practice and watch as the clouds of overthinking start to dissipate. Sayonara and happy thinking. And if you like this video, do not forget to subscribe and follow the Psychology and Physical Training channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.